So, hello, welcome to Your Creative Self Week Penultimate. I don't have to number them anymore because it's the one before last. Number 11 we're on, so getting things done. So this answer about doing creative things is you just have to block off the time in your day and say, I am going to do this thing and switch off your other devices and just do the thing and keep bearing in mind the fact that you really want to do the thing. So it's going to be good. Bird by bird. That's this. There's a book by Anne Lamott who's a, um, she's an American writer. My older brother, who was 10 years old at the time, was trying to get a report on birds written that he'd had three months to write. It was due the next day. He was at the kitchen table close to tears, surrounded by binder paper and pencils and unopened books on birds, immobilized by the hugeness of the task ahead. You can picture this, yeah? You can picture this. And my father sat down beside him, put his arm around my brother's shoulder and said, Bird by bird, buddy. Just take it bird by bird. You just have to chunk your way through the thing. There's no other way of getting the thing done. You just have to be like, ah, kind of cranking it out, doing it bit by bit. This actually works. Where you think, well, I'll just do one thing. You think, you think something really minimal. You think, I'll just do it for 15 minutes. Or I'll just do one bit. In reality, what we secretly hope is going to happen is that actually, once you've done one bit, then you'll be like, oh, well, okay, I'll do another bit. I'll do a bit more and so on. Marie Kondo. Yeah, Marie Kondo. I really like, I feel like her method of like cleaning can be applied to like creative stuff as well. You divide up your project into like kind of genres, even if it's not like this point that, you know, and like do that. I mean, it'd certainly be a way of selecting what creative thing to do, wouldn't it? Because it's like, if this thing isn't bringing you joy, then forget it, do something else because joy should be at the heart of all these things. I always say feel the fear and do it anyway. I'm going to say it again. You're not filled with confidence and it feels hard and maybe you feel fearful. You accept that and you know that it's only by doing the thing that you're gonna get beyond that fear anyway. Yvonne says, eat the frog. Do a difficult or tiresome task first and then you can reward yourself. Yes, that's a good one, that works. Mario Kart music, says Murrows, makes me feel like the most productive person ever. Really, you play Mario Kart music. Uh, Miku says, sometimes I pick a certain time where I don't do anything, like deciding after 9 p.m. I won't do any school or work-related things. Yes, that's good. That way I'll feel motivated to get things done before that time. Oh yeah, that's good. Think snowball, which merely means, I like the phrase think snowball. One thing leads to another. Saying yes to some things then leads to some other things that you hadn't even thought were anything to do with the first thing. Cassie says, how do we avoid not being too hard on ourselves if we're not finishing a project as quickly as we thought we would? The answer is just be nice to yourself, isn't it? Also, probably that the world isn't going to end if you don't quite get the thing done when you're meant to get it done. But I also like have kind of been trying to rewire my brain to not be mad if I don't do anything in a day. But it's actually helped a lot because then it gives myself like real rest and then I'm able to take something on usually the next day. This is a book. But anyway, I opened it and what I saw immediately was chapter nine, second epiphany. And I thought, well, that's intriguing. It's intriguing, not only because you know that this chapter contains an epiphany, which sounds good. Uh, and also it's obviously an epiphany that's so good that he named a chapter after it, so that's good. And also it's the second one. So like there must be another one as well. So it's like, whoa. Point after 10 years of making furniture, he gets this point where he finds himself for some slightly random reason in a sort of, in a workshop with an artist where she's writing they're writing artist statements. And he has to write an artist statement. He's not done an artist statement. And so he ends up saying, the artist statement that I wrote for Arlene that night included a sentence that brought my emerging ideas into focus. My own values became clear when I eventually realized that the words I had used to describe my aesthetic goals as a furniture maker, integrity, simplicity, and grace, also described the person I sought to grow into through the practice of craftsmanship. So it's about personal transformation, not just making stuff. So I like that. Write down artist statement on your piece of paper. Write down my name is eh, your name. And I make eh. And then interestingly, I like the last bit. Uh, I started it because eh, 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 But now I feel eh. I don't know, I, uh, I started because, because I was good at it. And now I feel like I've sort of kind of started to find who I am, like my identity within it. And it feels like less of a lie and more of who I am. Do it again, but with all different words. I said my work explores themes of um, individuality and happiness and embraces um, authenticity, vulnerability, and also experimentation. 
and it's interesting that like first time around you maybe went for the more obvious answers and then second time around you had to think about it more and you sort of milk more meaning out of it than what you got the first time around so when they have like an idea for a song or they're doing a song well then you do that idea and you you record it and you've like you've made the song so that is good and what any of the rest of us would normally do is think oh good we've made the song but what they do is you make the thing and then like uh-huh put it on the shelf and then you make the thing again so you're basically doing the same idea or the same song uh the same kind of thing but you do it different and again and then you're like okay and you put that on the shelf and you do it again so they end up with like five or six different recordings of what is basically the same song but you do it different each time because each time you do it you obviously do it different normally you make a thing once and you're pleased but imagine if you don't just make a thing once and you're pleased but you do it again and again and you come up with better versions or you can assemble parts of all of the things to make a really good thing it's a very interesting process i think spending time on generating lots of ideas is better than just having an idea and polishing it a lot spotlight on your creativity again because we like that that's fun here is a one moment a little sneak peek Ta -da. <laughs> um, from my portfolio on Flickr. so uh, the picture seems a bit um yeah a bit um hectic and restless yeah through pinterest um i came across with the line art technique and yeah, I tried it on my pictures and I really like it. Here you can see this one. But yeah, I find that I have also improved, as you can see here. And yeah, here are some photos of my um, own style. It's a bit, yeah, dreamy. I like, yeah. I like this and yeah. Yeah, that's really good, Nick, because <laughs> I'm really impressed with what a difference that makes because you just got a smallish amount of your drawing on top of photo but it really that really works doesn't it it's very good i like that yeah this is an example i started crocheting recently so i made this um over quarantine i made a pair of pants this was the first pair of pants that i ever made i write for her campus it's a little it's a group off the ryerson um community and it's like a big organization and there's different branches for each university. I figured I'd talk about this one. This is my most recent article that I've written. So with journalism writing, sometimes people will be like, is that creative? I don't know. And I get it. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Sometimes it's just kind of a regurgitation of facts and you write it down and that's the article. When I write articles that are more um, like lists of things, I'm getting facts, I'm talking to other people. When my perspective isn't necessarily shouldn't be the center of the piece. Mm -hmm. um, I try to kind of incorporate some, um, some creative writing in there. Nessa says, I love the way you write. Keeps me interested. Thank you. Yes, Andrea, <laughs> love it, yes. The first thing I, I wanted, my goal was to make like a entire outfit. Cause I, my goal like with sewing was to try and be more sustainable and like remake from like clothes I already had. First thing I made was like a bucket hat. So now I kind of got distracted and I've made a lot of bucket hats. Wow. So here are just like some pictures that I've taken. So this is in Tel Aviv, it's like on the beach. I really like colors and I like brightness stuff. So like I try to find shots that um, don't have that, don't need that much editing to get that out. This is a bit more edited, but honestly, like a, it's more just brightness. This is in Morocco. This was in Ontario. Um, I like did a day trip. This one's not edited at all, which I think is pretty cool. It's me and a cow. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a silent film. Nobody makes silent things but because we have sound now. Doing a silent thing, interesting, isn't it? Why did you choose to do that and black and white? It's like we used an old Bolex camera. So it's uh -huh. like film, black and white film, and they don't record sound on those cameras. I, I've gotten very into needle felting in quarantine and then I kind of fell out of love with it. But then I learned how to do this. You take uh, some sort of piece of like foam so that you don't stab yourself. Cause who boy, can you stab yourself? And it does hurt. <laughs> and then you stab it a lot. You stab it so, so many times. Uh, and then you go to a finer needle and you stab it a whole bunch more. The fibers are actually 
embedded all the way through. Uh, Harani says, do you have a specific piece you enjoyed making the most? Uh, I do, but I have to go get out of my closet because that's where it lives. Basically, it's like a turtleneck. <laughs> but I, I've, so it flips up and down. See, I can flip it up over my mouth. That's my thing. I'm, I'm very useful. You don't have to bother creating expressions when you're talking to people because your jumper can no, do exactly. all. Things. It's like a mask, but not a mask. I don't know, I have this eyeball. Ooh. Be nice. Would make an interesting projectile if someone walks into your room and you want them to leave. Thanks for coming this week. Thank you. Bye.